What's happening everyone? Welcome back to another video. Now on the last video I did something that I hadn't really done before. Um, I'd still like to think that it worked out to be honest. <laughs> But on this video, I'm going to be doing something I've done lots of times before, and that is I'm going to be installing the crankshaft into this engine block. So the aim of this video is to get the crank in the block all checked, plastic gauged, you name it, uh, and for it to not come back out. It's as simple as that. If it does have to come back out, it's probably only going to be for one reason, and that is because this is a stroker engine, uh, I'm using custom stroker pistons with a stroker crankshaft, we will then be pulling the piston further down the cylinder wall and there's the slightest chance that there might be a clearance issue between the piston and the oil squirter that sits at the bottom of the cylinder. And now if that happens, I might have to take the crank back out again and play with it. But the, the thing to get you know, like through your mind is that when you do this, for me anyway, is that you don't think that you're just going to install the crank once and that's it. That thing is going to have to go in at least twice possibly three times just to do all the checks that I want to do so you know literally this isn't just a one-time fit and forget thing this there's, there's some stuff to get through and the beauty about this is we start to see all the measuring that we've done in the past come together so for example I measured the mains I'll now confirm that with plastic aids so <laughs> we'll see how good my measuring is eh? <laughs> and we'll also be checking the uh, crankshaft end float so yeah, lots of things to do, and I think it's, it deserves a video of it on itself, to be honest. But before I get started, I have been playing with all of this to do all the checks, all the rest of it. Um, I've had the ERP assembly lube out, blah, blah, blah. So everything has to be immaculate, immaculate, before we do this. So I've got a bit of cleaning to do. Now I think you'll agree that that was worthwhile doing because uh, if I didn't do that then look what I'd be putting back in the engine. Freaking minging man isn't it? And that's just purely off the assembly, lube, the, you know checking clearances all the rest of it. I don't know why I put that in there either. But, uh, good for the bin and that's it. <laughs> but yeah so everything is absolutely immaculate. It's just one of them things you got to do. To be honest you go to this length you can't go skimping right at the end just on a simple bit of cleanliness. I mean, the clearances that you're dealing with in the oil, that tiny bit of cleanliness, it makes just a world of difference. So, without a doubt, good thing to do with that. Uh, time to start assembling now. And we'll start with the oil squirters. These need to go into the block, 27 newton meters. I've got my torque wrench set up, so let's get them fired in. Now, they're brand new oil squirters, along with brand new oil squirter bolts, and it's actually the bolt that has a little pressure release valve in it I think it opens at about a bar so if a lower bar of oil pressure they don't open they don't squirt after that it then opens up and squirts and the whole point is to cool the bottom of the piston provide lubrication for the cylinder wall but also to provide lubrication for your little ends so uh, really really important and you'll have big oil pressure problems if you don't have them installed correctly so 27 newton meters uh, no Loctite some people use Loctite I don't never had a problem so let's get the shells in you probably noticed that i like wearing gloves all the time but this is one task that i don't wear gloves for and that's because uh, when i'm doing it it's good to get your fingers in and around the bearings uh, in and around the registers from the block uh, and make sure that you know you don't feel anything sticking out no burrs no raised sections no high points everything should feel nice and smooth and you only know that by looking at it and feeling it with your hands. If you've got gloves on, it just doesn't it just doesn't happen. So uh, this is the one time I recommend that if you're gonna do this, you don't wear gloves. And time for the RPs. Looking good, time to get the bearings into the cups. Right, so the first time we install the crankshaft into the block, it's going to be a dry build, and that is to do one check, and that's it, and that is my main bearing oil clearance. 
So we'll get the crank in, we'll get all the caps in, tighten it all down, uh, and I'll do that with plastic gauge on the main bearing journals. And then what we'll do is we'll crack all the caps back off, remove them, and we'll have a look at the plastic gauge. And hopefully, I'll confirm my me, me main bearing oil clearances. <laughs> there should be pretty much ish where there should be to start with, which is like, you know, two, two and a bit thou. Let's get the crank in and let's see what it's like. The thrust washers don't even need to go in at this point because we're doing a radial oil clearance check. So, you know, they don't play any part in the check. But I like to put them in and the reason I like to put them in is just in case the thrush was a side. I can't even say thrush. Thrush. <laughs> thrush was a size might be a little bit too big, which will cause a problem with me number three main bearing cap. So I like to just put them in. And I put them in after the crankshaft's in. It's easy to slide them round. You've got enough end float to play with that. And then just use a screwdriver to just get them in that last little bit. If you try and fit them beforehand, it's just a pain in the arse and you'll find the fallout constantly. Before the caps go on, we're going to put plastic gauge across the top of the main bearing journals. Now, if you've not used plastic gauge before, then it's just this. It's little wax strips that you, you cut up and you put across your main bearing uh, journals. You bolt your caps down and what happens is the wax strip squashes and it goes to a certain thickness. And you then got a gauge. Look, it's even got my mucky paw prints off the last time I used it. Uh, it's uh, there's a gauge and all you do is you can tell your oil clearance purely off where it sits on that gauge and we'll go through it we'll, we'll see but uh, time to get this chopped up and put on plastic gauge on now so now I can get the main caps on I'll install them all one at a time and bolt them all down to 60 foot pounds three equal steps and I'll torque them down from the middle going outwards so I'll, I'll do three four two five one 20 foot pounds, 3, 4, 2, 5, 1, 40 foot pounds, and then 3, 4, 2, 5, 1, 60 foot pounds, and then we'll be golden. Expertly installed, I'm sure you'll agree. Now I've got to take them off again. Right, so the plastic gauge is now squashed over the main journals. So I just now need to get the plastic ga the gauge, plastic gauge, the gauge for the plastic gauge, uh, and then offer it up. And then whatever thickness lines up, then that's basically what my clearance is. Now, just before we start, remember me one to four. When I measured it, was two and a bit thou, 0 0.06, with me number five being 0 0.065 or about two and a half thou. So let's see what the plastic gauge says. Right, number one, so the plastic gauge 0 0.063 just looks a little bit too thin, and the 0 0.05 is too fat, so straight away it's between 0 0.05 and 0 0.063. Um, and let's face it, it's only a smidge smaller than the 0 0.63, so I think that basically confirms that my number one is at 0 0.06. Number two, exactly the same. Number three, exactly the same. Number four is split, because it's got a split bearing on it, but exactly the same, I would say. I mean, number five, the 0 0.063 probably is, probably is looks about right to be honest and that 0 0.063 is two and a half thou so I know it's a bit mad but it would actually look like I knew what I was talking about doesn't it yeah <laughs> I want to take that as a victory the plastic gauge has basically just confirmed what my measurements did before that my bearings are all at 0 0.06 Number five actually looks the same on plastic gauge. And because it's such a small difference that, you know, that 0 0.06 to 0 0.065, it's probably why the plastic gauge doesn't pick it up. But I'm going to just revel <laughs> in victory there. <laughs> exactly what I thought it was going to be. Exactly what I want. And I'm happy with it. 0 0.06 basically across all five. 
uh, you know, ish. So that's really cool. So now I just need to go through the whole process of cleaning again because I've got to get the plastic gauge off. I don't have to remove all the grease, uh, the ARP assembly loop from the studs, but I like to, you know, just to keep it all nice and uh, clean. Uh, and then we'll put it all back in again. So now is also the time to check the block, the bearings, the studs, the caps, everything, the crank, just in case there's any little tiny witness marks, any little scratches, gouges, anything that's causing interference before you go forward because now when we put it in, we're going to be putting it in with assembly loop and we're going to be making sure it spins and check end float and all the rest of it. Uh, so now that it's dry and there's no lubrication to get in the way, now is the time to get an eye over it. And it looks mint, absolutely class. So we'll get it all back in, but this time we'll be putting assembly lube everywhere. Here we go, a moment of truth. See if the crank spins freely. Oh, nice, 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 nice. When you put it together with assembly lube, it doesn't tend to like completely freewheel. Like if this was engine oil, then chances are that'll be a little bit more freer. You can, I can even hear the stickiness of the assembly lube. So it just means it's doing its job. But that, that spins nice and free, that. No problem at all. Now we just need to check the crankshaft end float. Right, crankshaft end float. Uh, now this is a dial test indicator, so this uh, allows me to check the end float really accurately. You can do it with feeler gauges if you want, but I, I choose to use this. I like using my toys, to be honest. So, so first of all, we'll just get it stuck to the block. Uh, just line this up. Lock that off. Right, so I just need to zero this now by uh, prising the crank one way, and I can just turn this round and zero it. So that's at zero now, and if we now prise the crank the other way, it goes to 10, 11, 12, 13, 13, so 0.13 of a millimeter. Crankshaft end float with the dial test indicator with the crank and the bearings and everything inside the engine it's coming out as 0 0.13 or probably just over and if you remember back to the crankshaft stroke uh, video um, I measured the crankshaft end float on the bench at 0 0.14 millimeters so the teeniest tiniest little bit of discrepancy there and that is probably purely just because I now have thrust Thrust, thrust washers <laughs> with assembly lube on them. So that tiny bit of assembly lube is just taking up a tiny bit of that clearance, which is why in the engine it measures 0 0.13, but on the bench with no lube there, it measures 0 0.14. So really, really happy with both of them, to be honest. 0 0.13 crankshaft end flow, which is spot on. The crank rotates freely. So now there's just one final little check to do. And that is crankshaft run out. You're not taking the crankshaft out again, are you? <laughs> well, not completely anyway. So crankshaft run out. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove my numbers two, three and four bearing caps. We'll take them completely out. We'll set up the dial test indicator and I'll do that on my number three main bearing journal. And then what I'll do is I'll just 
gently rotate the crankshaft and the whole aim of this is purely to check if the crank is bent so when the crank rotates I shouldn't get any deflection if I do get deflection then it means that the crank could possibly be bent and therefore you don't want to use it now obviously you'd like to do this test before you actually get this far and in an ideal world you would but you can't so well I can't anyway because I haven't got like a, a funky test rig or anything like that I've just got an engine so yeah let's get two three and four off and we'll see what we've got right it can be a bit of a faff setting this up but let's give it a whirl do, 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 do. Right, that has to rest on here. Turn the magnet on. Set that down. Just need to zero this. Right, here we are. So I'm all set up. I've got my crankshaft set at zero. I have to be careful when I turn the crank at the minute because I've took the thrust washers out. I've learned how to say that, yes. And uh, so the crank can actually move. Now, if it does move, I can actually score the thrust faces of the crank. So I don't want to do that. So I just need to make sure that not only do I rotate the crank, but I keep it exactly in the middle of where it needs to be. And I don't want that to move. So here we go. Just turn the crank. Just doing it nice and gently. And that needle isn't moving a single bit. It moved there because that's what I, I just hit that. <laughs> this would be easier, by the way, if you if you can get like a, a nose extension for this, like a, a a measure extension piece. But I haven't got one, so I have to try and get it so that I don't hit the actual crank. Boom! So no measured crankshaft run out at all. None whatsoever. This crank is as straight as a die. So, whoo! <laughs> Chuffed about that. <laughs> so now I can get this all together again. And I'll do that by installing the main caps 2, 3 and 4 again. Get the thrust washers in uh, and we'll get it all tightened up. Now I'll also loosen off caps 1 and 5 because it's always good to tighten down from the middle going out. So loosen off them, put the rest in, thrust washers <gasps> and we'll be done. Now this is the really satisfying bit for me when it all starts to come together. This stroke of crankshaft is now bolted into this AGU block. King's Racing bearings, ARP studs, my main bearing oil clearance. I've checked it with plastic gauge. It matches what I found on the bench. So I think that straight away confirms that one. Um, end float matches pretty much what I found on the bench. <laughs> so I'm really happy with that. And obviously the run out check now, some people like to take the numbers two three and four bearing shells out the uh, main bearing tunnel when they do that but i'm quite happy just as the last check uh, just when i'm putting it back together the crankshaft spins no problem and um, you get that nice oozy stickiness that you get from the assembly loop i've had that a million times before there's nothing wrong with that crankshaft at all really happy with it it's just really nice for it to all come together and it all to work out and obviously the next step will be getting the pistons and rods in uh, and then we'll just continue with this engine build so hopefully that has helped you out if it has then please give us a thumbs up all oh, right you might think that my hands look dirty but they're not it's just alp assembly loop it's an awful stuff but yeah give us a thumbs up subscribe if you want to see this come together and we'll see you on the next one